Okay, welcome to Algebra 2.1. Um, the first unit that you'll see will um, we'll be, we'll be working with equations and inequalities. Lesson 1-1 is real numbers and number operations. Um, and so basically, what the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to cover some vocabulary, types of numbers. Um, so the first number are rational numbers, and these are um, whole numbers. So um, all whole numbers are any of the um, positive whole numbers starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Integers are all of the positive and negative whole numbers, so negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a ratio of two numbers. So for example, 3 fourths, um, the ratio of 3, and the, or the integer 3 and the integer 4 is written as 3 fourths. One third, even whole numbers such as negative 4 can be written as a fraction, so negative 4 over 1. You could also use 5, which would be 5 over 1. Um, whenever you write a rational number as a decimal, it's either going to terminate or it will repeat. So 3 fourths would be 0.75, it stops, it ends. 1 third is 0.3 repeating. Irrational numbers are real numbers that are not rational, uh, such as the square root of 2. If you actually found what the square root of 2 is, you take 2, the square root, um, it would be 1.41421356, and it keeps going forever. It doesn't stop, so um, it doesn't repeat, I mean, it doesn't terminate. The problem is, though, it doesn't repeat either. So when, when it fails those two tests, it is an irrational number. Another example of that would be pi. Um, it's 3.14, and then as you know, if you put it in the calculator, it keeps on going forever. It doesn't stop, and it doesn't repeat. The origin is the point um, zero on the, on the graph. Now we're going to graph some real numbers. My experience has been that the easiest way to graph some real numbers is if you first of all find approximately what their decimal is. So in other words, we're going to take 4 divided by 3, and that's going to give us 1.3 repeating negative. The next one, the square root of 2, we find 2, the square root, it gives us 1.41 approximately. And then 2.7 is already set as a decimal. So when we go to graph these, we're going to do negative 1 and 1 third. The so one, negative 1 and 1 third, between negative 1 and negative 2, and it's not quite a half. So there's negative 4 thirds. Square root of 2 is 1.41. So it's between 1 and 2, and it's almost halfway, so we get 1 point, oops, let's write that as the square root of 2, since that's the one we're working with, square root of 2. And then 2.7 is between 2 and 3, but it's not quite 3. So the easiest way is, is you've got to go to 2, and then all of these are all the decimals in between, and it's not quite 3, so 2.7 would be almost a 3, but not quite. So now I want you... Uh, now you try um, to graph the real numbers on the number line. Remember, anything on the left, so negative 3 would be the smallest on this number line, 3 would be the greatest. The arrows just indicate that it goes in both directions and doesn't stop. Um, so at, whenever you see the words you try, go ahead and pause the video, um, graph the points, put them in order, and then um, restart the video and check your answer. So at this time, go ahead and pause the video. So if we go ahead and graph 3 over 2, let's take 3 divided by 2, gives us 1.5. Negative 1 is already written. We need to find what the square root of 3 is as a decimal. It gives us approximately 1.73. Then 5 over 2, 5 divided by 2, and it gives us negative 2.5, and 3 is already taken care of. So 3 over 2. Again, it's between 1 and 2, and it's actually right smack dab in the middle at 1 and a half. So 3 over 2, 
negative one's already done for us. Square root of three is 1.73, not quite two. Negative five over two, again it's two, negative two and a half. And then three is already, so we can just make a dotted three. Okay. All right, some keywords that you'll need to know um, would be sum. Remember, anytime you see the word sum, it means to add. Difference is subtract. Product is multiply. And quotient is divide. Um, this is a good place to, that you might want to write down some notes. Um, these are some memorization things that you'll need to memorize. Um, so, for example, the commutative property, anytime you see the commutative property, or you'll need to refer back to it. It's the one that changes the order. So for example, if we had A plus B, then what we would do is we would change that. If we were talking about the commutative property, so it was B plus A. And if we applied numbers to it, we could use the numbers 3 plus 2. equals, if we just change the order, 2 plus 3. And it also works for multiplication. If we did multiplication where we had A plus B, and all we're going to do is change the order, so we do B times A. So let's apply some numbers to it. If we did 3 times 2, it gives us 6. We could also change the order and give us 2 times 3. Alright, the next one is the associative property. And the associative property is the one that all it does is it regroups. So in other words, if we had the addition, if we wanted to multiply or add A plus B and then add on C, it would be the same as if we took and we added B plus C and then we added A to that. So if we apply numbers to it, we'll use the same numbers and include 4. So So remember, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 4 then would give us 9. So if we, if we just regroup those, so we grouped 2 plus 4 first, remember 2 plus 4 would give us 6, 6 plus 3 then would give us 9, so 9 does equal 9. Also works with multiplication, in the first grouping we're grouping A, plus, or A times B, in the first one we're going to group or in the second one, we're going to group B times C first. So if we just use the same numbers, but we're going to multiply, 3 times 2 times 4 would be the same as if we took 3 times 2 times 4. So remember, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 4 gives you 24. And here, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 3 also gives you 24. The next one would be the identity property. The identity property is whenever you take a number and add it to zero. So you're going to end up with A. So whatever you started with, you're going to end with it. So that's why it would be the identity. So zero plus A would also give us A. If we took numbers to it, three plus zero would give us three. And on multiplication, whenever we multiply, it's going to be we multiply it by one. So A times one would be A. We could also multiply it the other way. 1 times A would give us A. And if we applied numbers to it, for example, 4 times 1 is going to give us 4. Inverse. Inverse is you think about undoing something. So if we started with A, we want to get to where we have nothing. So, or the, or the, what would be the identity? So in 0 in this case. So you just basically, you're going to add by its opposite. Okay. So the opposite of A would be negative A, which would give us 0. If we started with negative A and added a positive A, would give us 0. Multiplication. 
we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So if we put a 1 underneath this multiply, we end up with 1. Put a 1 underneath it, cross out, we end up with 1. So it's any time you end up and the result, the product is 1. The last one is known as the distributive property. Remember, um, if you take a number and multiply it times the group, so A times B, you end up with A times B plus A times C. Okay. If we applied numbers to it, we get 3 times plus 2 plus 4. So 3 plus times 2 plus 3 times 4. So remember, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, 6 plus 12 would give us 18. Same way if we did it this way, 4 plus 2 is 8, I'm sorry, 4 plus 2 is 6, times the 3, we get our 18. Alright, so let's go ahead and identify some of the properties. So the first one, if we add 3 plus 9 first and then add 8 to it, and all we did was, the order of the numbers are exactly the same, all we did was move the parentheses. Remember, that's regrouping, so it's the associative property. On B, 14 times 1 gives us 14. So we started with 14, we multiplied it times something, and ended up with 14. So anytime we multiply it times 1, remember that one's the identity property. And C, we started with 5, we ended up with 1 when we multiplied. So remember, we multiply by the reciprocal. We take 5 and flip it over, we get 1 fifth. That's the inverse property. And D, we had 14 plus 7. We flipped it, so it's 7 plus 14. And remember, that one's the commutative property. Okay. So at this time, go ahead and try the next ones. Um, it's a you try, so pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers. So, all right. So the very first one, let's go ahead and check your answers. So the very first one would be the commutative property because all we did was we changed the order of 5 plus 2 to 2 plus 5. B is the inverse property because we took a positive number and we added it its opposite. And C would be the identity property because we added it to zero. Remember, anytime we add something to zero, we end up with what we started with. And D, inverse, because we flipped it and we ended up with that one when we multiply. So, all right, last slide. We just wanted to review some of the integer operations. So first of all, um, what's the sum of 32 and negative seven? So remember, sum means add. So if you took 32 plus negative 7, remember when the signs are different, you have to subtract, and we get 25. B, what's the difference between a negative 5? Remember, difference is subtract. So we're going to take negative 5 minus 8. Remember, whenever you subtract, you've got to change the signs to an add and change the one after it to a negative. So you get a negative 13. And C, what's the product of 9 and negative 4? Remember, product is multiply. So we get neg or 9 times negative 4, which would give us a negative 36. And D, quotient. Remember, quotient means to divide. So I get negative 5 divided by a negative 1 half. Whenever you divide fractions, remember you have to flip the second one to its reciprocal and multiply. So 5 times negative 2, which would give us a positive 10. So go ahead, um, review any of the lesson that you need to, and then you may begin on your assignment.